Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. The Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. He's a showboat. He's a grandstander. The FBI has been in turmoil. You know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. You take a look at the FBI a year ago. It was in virtual turmoil less than a year ago. It hasn't recovered from that. Monday you met with the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Right. Did you ask for a recommendation? Uh, what I did is I was going to fire Comey. My decision. It was not... You had made the decision before they came uh, in the I, room. I was going to fire Comey. Uh, I, there's no good time to do it, by the way. Uh, they, because in your letter you said I, I accepted, accepted their recommendation, yeah, well, so you also, had already made the decision. I, oh, I was going to fire regardless of recommendation. So there was they, really room. He made a recommendation. He's highly respected. Very good guy. Very smart guy. Uh, the Democrats like him. The Republicans <clears throat> like him. Uh, he made a recommendation. But regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey. Let me ask you about your termination letter to Mr. Comey. You write, I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under investigation. <laughs> Why did you put that in there? Because he told me that. I mean, he told me he that. He told you you weren't under investigation yeah, with re and I, regard I've to heard the Russian that. investigation? I've heard that from others. I think Was it he, in a phone call? Did you meet face to face? Uh, I had a dinner with him. He wanted to have dinner because he wanted to stay on. We had a very nice dinner he, at the White he House asked very for the early on. A dinner was arranged. I think he asked for the dinner. And he wanted to stay on as the FBI head. And I said, I'll, you know, consider. We'll see what happens. But uh, we had a very nice dinner. And at that time, he told me, you are not under investigation, that which was, I knew anyway. That was one meeting. What was the, what First of all, when you're under investigation, you're giving all sorts of documents and everything. I knew I wasn't under. And I heard it was stated at the committee, at some committee level, that I wasn't. Number one. So that didn't come directly then, from him. Then during the phone call, he said it. And then during another phone call, he said it. So who, he said who? it once at dinner. And then he said it twice during phone calls. Did, did you call him? Uh, in one case, I called him. In one case, he called me. And did you ask, am I under investigation? I actually asked him, yes. I said, if it's possible, would you let me know, am I under investigation? He said, you are not under investigation. But he's, he's given sworn testimony that there is an ongoing investigation into the Trump campaign and possible collusion with the Russian government. You were the centerpiece of the Trump campaign. Well, all so was I can he tell being you truthful is, when well, he says I you know were under the, investigation? I know that I'm not under investigation. Me, personally. I'm not talking about campaigns. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm not under investigation. Now, if you're out to dinner with a man who is, according to Donald Trump, interviewing for his job, why he would have to do that with a 10-year appointment, I don't know. But he's asking you if he can stay as FBI director and then you ask him, well, am I under investigation? Don't you think, A, that if you were a real law enforcement officer, you would never answer that question? And B, that that would be a conflict of interest? So we're going to break from our little tradition here today and have a guest right at the top of the uh, show here. I, I have been trying to, and uh, today successfully, yay, reached out to uh, Richard Painter, who was the chief White House ethics lawyer in the George W. Bush administration. Uh, and you've probably seen Richard on TV, and you know that I, I, I worship at his feet. I call him Sir Richard. So uh, welcome him to the show to uh, help us clear up this little Lester Holt bit and some other things that are floating around. Richard, it is just... Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this. Absolutely. Oh, good to speak with you. And I, I tell you, this has uh, just uh, been an amazing week with yet more craziness uh, coming out of this Russia investigation. And uh, the fact that the White House doesn't seem to be taking it seriously. And uh, it's, a, it's a real mess. It is a real mess. But, you know, um, you know, the old saying that it's harder to tell a lie than tell the truth, because when you lie, you have to keep your story straight. They don't even make the attempt to keep the story straight. But now he's 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 kind of, um, you know, uh, regurgitating this thing in his head about what happened with Comey. And he says that Comey and he were out to dinner. He believes that Comey asked for the dinner and that at the dinner, Comey was saying, can I continue on as head of the FBI and Donald Trump then asks him, well, am I under investigation? Is that a conflict? 
Well, yes, of course. Uh, the I mean, what answer uh, would the, you give? I'm interviewing yeah, uh, you, and I want to know, uh, you know, uh, you want to know if you could stay on in the Randy administration, and I go, well, Richard, that depends. Are you investigating me? <laughs> well, I, I think the only proper answer to that is no comment. I don't know why Director Comey, if Director Comey told him he was not under investigation. We'll see what Director Comey has to say. I believe he's going to testify shortly before Congress, mm-hmm. and he'll probably be asked about that. Yeah. But I would think the appropriate answer would be, I am sorry, I cannot comment on pending investigation. Which is what he has said to every single person, except in closed sessions. I'm sure he's briefed them, you know, uh, of the totality of this investigation, which, according to the testimony today in the Senate uh, by Mr. McCabe, who is now uh, the acting director, uh, he, he said that this is a significant investigation, while the White House from the podium says this is one of the smallest things that the FBI has on its plate. I mean, Richard, who and how can we believe anything anymore from anybody? Well, I haven't believed what's been said in the White House press secretary's office for a long time. I mean, that that was just a farce yesterday to say this is a very minor investigation. I mean, this is critically important to our national security when Russia, uh, which has, by the way, been seeking to destabilize Western democracies uh, for 100 years, ever since the 1917 Russian Revolution. That's been their playbook. And they've been largely successful in Europe. Uh, they did a lot of it. They failed in France last week, but they, they've had some big successes. And boy, did they hit the jackpot in the USA. They hit the jackpot last year. Have and, you-, uh, you know, this is critically important to our national security. And to say this is just a minor investigation. I mean, the White House press office is completely out to lunch. Richard, when do we get to obstruction of justice with regard to this investigation and, uh, you know, Trump canceling Sally Yates at the, for, you know, at the House Intelligence uh, Committee by, you know, telling Devin Nunes something and then Devin Nunes pretends to tell it to the White House and then the whole thing is canceled. And then 24 hours after this devastating testimony from a woman who was so completely credible and so composed uh, and had such a grasp on uh, her t- her tenure at the FBI and the time that she spent, uh, you know, on this uh, I- I Michael Flynn uh, investigation. Um, 24 hours after that, they fire Comey in- in- to change the subject, obviously. And, uh, you know, the president's uh, 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 entire administration makes up a story. They tell us that, oh, no, this new uh, this new Rod Ro- uh, Rosenstein came in and he you know, recommended the firing. And now we find out today, oh, no, I was going to fire him anyway. So he had Rod actually write in reverse, reverse engineer a reason for Comey uh, being fired. I mean, what what are we looking at? Is this abuse of power? Is this obstruction of justice? Is it a combination? Is it none of the above? It's probably all of the above. Uh, I'll throw it with something confidence thrown on in there. It's uh, uh, that Justice Department memo made absolutely no sense. Uh, it spoke a lot on the Hillary Clinton email investigation. And that's the one thing that uh, President Trump would want to be high-fiving at, at Rick Comey over, uh, the way that was handled, which, uh, you know, helped hand uh, Trump the election. Uh, but that's not the reason that they're firing. That makes absolutely no sense. That that's the reason we're going to fire the FBI director, of, you know, four months into the president's term over a, a, a bungling of the uh, of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. I mean, we're really getting awfully tired of hearing about Hillary Clinton's email. <laughs> uh, you I know, know, I, I know, really, but, we're focused on Vladimir Putin and whether what he's poking around in all of our emails. Yeah, I mean, uh, today I was listening to the testimony and they were saying, don't install, uh, you know, the Kasparov computer software uh, in, 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 in any of the government's, uh, you know, computers. It's just not, you know, and they sell that stuff here and a lot of people have it. Uh, but that aside, Rod Ro- Rosenstein, did you know him? Because I know that he was supposed to be on the Fourth Circuit, but, uh, you know, uh, President Bush nominated him like, in, uh, you know, right before the election. And uh, so he didn't get on that court. And then Obama came in and, you know, picked somebody else. So I, I assume that, that, you know, there's some familiarity on your part of this man. Why would he write such a, a recommendation? Well, I don't know him well personally, but but this is the problem with these political jobs. The Justice Department is is they you know they say okay, we've got a certain objective here, and now right it right up, Mama's going to back it up. 
can you write a memo that would justify uh, terminating uh, uh, Director Comey? Well, yeah, I actually could. I wrote a Hatch Act complaint to the uh, Office of Special Counsel about him after he wrote that the really stupid letter to the House Oversight Committee about the Hillary Clinton emails a week before the election. Uh, so is Director Comey someone who's vulnerable to criticism? Oh, absolutely, yes. You can put together a memo. I think I could put together a lot better memo than that one if I wanted to <laughs> make a case against Director Comey. But at the end of the day, the question is, uh, should we be firing the FBI director in the middle of an investigation that's critical for our national security uh, where we have foreign espionage because I could buy the Russians with the collaboration of Americans. Some of those Americans could be high up in the United States government. We had a Russian agent heading up our National Security Council for 18 days. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just a, it's a complete disaster. And, and to fire the FBI director in the middle of that because he, he bungled uh, the Hillary Clinton email investigation uh, I mean, it just shows complete lack of judgment on the part of the president, the attorney general, who shouldn't have had anything to do with this because he's supposed to be refusing from anything affecting the right, right. investigation. Uh, and it, it's complete, uh, 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 you know, it's inexplicable other than an attempt to slow down the Russia investigation. Right. It's not going to work. It's just going to speed it up uh, no. because the Republican members of Congress are, are realizing that uh, the, the American people are not going to put up with it. Well, you know Republicans on the Hill. Uh, pro- I know Democrats on the Hill, but I don't know very many Republicans all that well. Uh, when will when will people, and I mean both parties, stop being parties and start being Americans? I mean, how scared do they have to be of this man? I, how, how, how much of a lack of judgment does there have to be before they say, uh, you know, th- th- this guy with the nuclear codes or this guy is, uh, you know, he said things were in a blind trust. I know you have a lawsuit. With regard to his conflicts, uh, Jared's sister in China, uh, uh, Trump, didn't, you know, uh, 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 the blind trust, uh, that bet, that big dog and pony show we had with, uh, you know, the lawyer and all the papers. It's going to be in a blind trust. And now we know, no, it's not in a blind trust. He can he can see he can see. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, how much yeah, do you well, think that I, they can I, tolerate I, yeah. up there? Uh, well, I've been uh, involved in the Republican Party for most 30 years. And yeah. one thing I've, I've learned is Republicans don't think that much differently than Democrats in terms of political calculation. I agree with they, you. They often go along with their leadership. Uh, they also want to support a president who's out their political party and certainly give them a chance to get up and running and be the new president. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to go up against the president because then the president could support a primary challenger. So you have all those calculations in there. But then you have other factors. I mean, something involves our national security and Russian spies, that, that doesn't tend to go over very well with the American people. Well, let me, and, let me uh, ask you this, because people don't want to hear it from some girl like me. They want to hear it from a guy like you, uh, who was a, you know, a counsel to a president. Um, what is the national security issue with Russia? Well, they but to try to subvert uh, democratic uh, uh, governments, uh, Ever since the October 1917 revolution, they got a hundred years of this game. Uh, they've been doing it in Europe. Uh, they destabilized the countries before the Second World War. That um, some other countries, the fascism, to try to counteract that. They they wreaked havoc there. And then after the Second War World War, they uh, uh, of course took over half of Europe. So they were playing around all over the world. That's part of what got us into Vietnam. And they, but they never got much traction in the United States with the American Communist Party because we don't have much of a uh, of a left wing, so to speak, except for you know a couple of people at college campuses or whatever, or Greenwich Village. <laughs> but then, um, you know, what happened? They discovered the right wing and the racist element in the United States about 15 years ago, and they figured they they are still bad. And, and uh, so uh, this is just part of the old Russian playbook. They tried this in France last week, and it didn't work as well. Uh, because uh, but, because France got to see what happened to us. I think, you know, Trump was oh, a, yeah, a cautionary tale. Yeah. 
And so so the is, the goal, is, is, is the goal for yeah. Russia, obviously the goal for Russia is to create another Soviet Union, another great empire. Uh, was was what if they wanted something from Donald Trump, if if they wanted something from him, would they want uh, NATO disbanded? Would they want our, our resources? You know, what would they want? What would be the oh, they want lots of stuff? I mean, they want to be able to do what they do with, uh, in Ukraine without sanctions. They, they want to get into the Middle East and. You know, Russia's been wanting to expand, been, been an expansive uh, vote for several hundred years. So, mm-hmm. going back to Catherine the Great, I mean, and, and they aren't that, you know, it's not that we ought to be in a, some sort of war with Russia. They've been playing this game for a long time, but the way they do it is subvert the democratic system in, in Western countries. And that's a lot easier and cheaper than trying to confront us militarily, uh, where, where they lost on the arms race. Uh, uh, thing, but they they're winning at this game, and and so this gets us back to Congress, and in particular the Senate. Uh, is Senator McCain in particular? I mean, how much of this is he going to put up with? And he spent five years or so in the Hanoi Hilton while uh, 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 Donald Trump was had us. I guess he had a sore foot, was running around New York doing what? <laughs> well, you could listen to Billy Bush tape to what he was doing in New York. Well, you know, and and McCain's in in a in a POW. Uh, situation and and uh, uh, Trump then says he's a he was a loser for right. getting cash and he uh, and he let that go uh, he let it go yeah. McCain was okay with that exactly but enough is enough and now we've got the Russians destabilizing the United States I mean why was McCain in Vietnam we shouldn't have been in Vietnam but it was, we didn't like what Tom the either. Russians were doing all over the world trying to destabilize other countries, stir up civil wars, and they were involved in Vietnam. We shouldn't have gone in there. But the point is that to have the Russians doing this in our own country, and uh, the president just, oh, this is just, uh, this is a fake news. Uh, <laughs> and the White House says there's a minor investigation over at the FBI because they're doing major things like still going through Hillary Clinton's email, I guess. I mean, the whole thing's a flaw. <laughs> it is. And uh, yesterday and when so, I saw... yeah, the Senate's going to get serious. Uh, they're not going to put up with it. Th- Lindsey Graham, yeah. Sass, they're a bunch of them in the Senate are yeah. not going to put up with this. Well, yeah. I think they, they're starting to understand that they have to follow the money. I, I, I know that Lindsey Graham finally indicated that he might be interested in some of Donald Trump's financial dealings with Russia, considering that, you know, a golf reporter was able to find out that $100 million from Russia had come to help Donald Trump buy this uh, golf course in North Carolina. And uh, of course, you know, Junior over there in 2008 is saying, oh, so much Russia money coming in our way. I don't even understand it, but we have all this Russia money buying all of our apartments. And, you know, then yesterday, I mean, the optics of it alone, it was a laugh riot yesterday if you didn't care about democracy. But uh, yesterday you had Lavrov in the Oval Office for the first time in what, eight years? Did the Bush administration ever host uh, the, the uh, any of the Russian uh, contingency. I mean, you had Kislyak in there yesterday, and then as soon and 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 the only reason why we know this is because the Russian press, TASS, the the Russian news agency, was in the Oval. Not American news agencies. None of them were allowed in there. And then as soon as they realize, oh, there might be photos taken, Kislyak jumps up from the chair next to Bush, and Henry Kissinger sits down for the photo op. Oh yeah, I mean, this type of thing. I mean, we, the that? Bush administration, yeah, the Bush administration. We, of course, uh, wanted to have a, a, a diplomacy with the Russians, along with everyone else. But of course, we're well aware of what the Russians were up to. Uh, but we never would have had a, a, a top national security uh, council uh, had the uh, a Russian agent. Uh, that you know, this is things that would only come out of a spy novel. <laughs> Uh, at least so I thought until we, we got into this situation this year. So uh, we really uh, do not have a White House that's in control of the situation. Uh, the uh, It's critical to our national security to figure out who is collaborating with the Russians. Yeah. And that that's what's most important, that we zero in on the underlying substance of this investigation. I hear It's very different than Watergate, where the break-in was wrong, but... The cover-up was really the the worst thing Nixon did. Uh, but at least here, Nixon, I will say this, yeah. at least Nixon's administration had some integrity. Do you know, I mean, when he went and asked for Archibald Cox to be fired to a man, they said no until they got to... Um, 
Uh, I always forget his name, thank God. Bork. I yeah, it was Bob Bork who yeah. did the firing, but he, he went through to an attorney general who refused right, to do it. Right, and they and, were all uh, fired. They, Richardson, yeah. yeah, It's interesting, though, that they had more integrity, that they said, I'd rather lose my job, I'd rather be fired, uh, than uh, you know, fire the special prosecutor who's investigating you, sir. It's just not a smart move, and it's, uh, you know, it would be obstruction of justice, and, and I would rather be fired. And they were fired. But this administration does not have a shred of the Nixon White House's integrity. Now, that's a mouthful. <laughs> well, there's no way they're going to recruit someone of the caliber of Elliot Rich to be the attorney general for, for, for Donald Trump. I mean, I, I, I don't I think a lot of people wouldn't want that job. So, uh, <laughs> you know, given a lot of the other stuff that was going on. So we, we're in a very difficult uh, we are. Uh, we are. How's your situation? lawsuit going? I heard that you got you had uh, a few more people, a few more plaintiffs join your suit. Is that true? Yeah, we have plaintiffs joining in hotels and others who have economic injury that's a different uh, type of economic injury than ours over at Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Yeah. So yeah. The, the judge is going to hear that. Uh, you know, and there may be some hearings this summer or fall. But uh, when we carry out these matters in the court that does take time yeah i know and i, I want to <laughs> emphasize that where there should be being addressed right now and this is the question of foreign government payments to the president of the united states uh unconstitutional foreign government payments to the president uh that needs to be addressed in congress uh the house and the senate should be looking at the tax returns and other information and find out which foreign governments are transferring money to President Trump, well, whether sir, it's lending I, if, him money or whatever. If you were successful in subpoenaing uh, his tax returns, I mean, <laughs> that would be, uh, that would be, uh, you know, uh, I would set up a little shrine to you right here in the studio. I really Well, that would <laughs> be a good idea to get those ter- returns. But I'll tell you, the state of New York ought to just release them. I, I think they're, uh, it's their authority. They have the authority in New York if they want to pass legislation saying that if you're a resident of the state of New York and you file a New York state tax return and you are elected to federal or state office of a certain rank or above, that that New York state tax return is going to be made public. Uh, they ought to just enact that in the, in the New York Assembly and have the governor sign it into law and then start posting those all of those tax returns on the on the on the web. They can put the governors up there, too, but uh, that's, that's the first one I'm going to check. But the law, w- it couldn't be retroactive, could it? Or would it just say currently oh, I serving? Think it probably could be anybody who is currently serving. Okay. Uh, you know, if you filed a New York tax return in the past three years and you're currently serving as an elected official there you go. for an office in which the people of the state of New York have a right to vote, that would be, as say, two senators, you're all the New York congressmen, the president of the United States, the governor, you know. Got it. Yeah, that's whole a whole bunch good, of them. That's a beauty. Yeah, to just put them on the website up there in Albany, and then we can all go and, and take a look out. <laughs> it's great. Well, thank you so much. I hope I could talk to you again in the future going forward. Uh, this is not over. And uh, I'm not sure how much we can take, but nice piece in Rolling Stone, sir. I, 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 tr- I, I admire you, and thank you. Well, thank you very much, and I know that's not often you see the uh, President Bush's ethics lawyer being quoted rolling stone. <laughs> well, time, I will be, I'll be, I'll, I'll come clean with you. I kept saying each time I would see you at the beginning when you first started, uh, you know, the, the lawsuit, I would say I didn't know Bush had an ethics lawyer. <laughs> But yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know. But listen, it's. <laughs> I know that's like that. Uh, I know that I've been the subject of that joke a long time. But it'd be like, well, Donald Trump <laughs> having a marriage counselor. <laughs> Thank you. You're a kind man. Thank you, and a brilliant one too. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Bye, Richard. Richard Painter, everybody. George W. Bush, Bush's ethics lawyer. It's hard to say. It's very hard. To- but I love him. Didn't I tell you that he had the exact uh, delivery that you would want? In an ethics lawyer, <laughs> it just you can't you can't not listen to what he's saying. He has been through the wars. He knows just how far you can push it, and this has gone so beyond where it should or could or we ever thought things might ever in America be able to go without being uh, checked. And that's why I just get this 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 crazy feeling that Donald Trump is daring us to impeach him daring us I, I just don't think he he cares about this job so much he just doesn't want to 
seem like a loser. We're going to have to punish him so that he can scream that it was our fault. And that's fine. If, if, if I or Richard Painter, you know, obviously there's no partisanship here, uh, could have something to do with getting rid of him. He could blame me, Richard, every, he could blame us for the rest of his life. I, we, we would take that as a compliment. You know, I, I remember reading Elliot Cohn, Elliot Cohn, who I never agreed with on anything ever. When he said, don't work for Donald Trump, you're making a deal with the devil. I knew, I knew we were in trouble. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes, Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. RandyRhodes.com. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.